dear Thai, dear brother and sister, dear Sangha. Um, my, question, my name is Melanie and my question is the following. How do I start the process of healing a relationship when there is a lot of suffering in that relationship and no more communication and the other person is not a practitioner? That's my question. How we can continue a relationship when other person is not cooperative, don't know anything at practice here? And how we can continue that relation? That is your question. Actually, the, the relationship is broken, and how can I start to uh, heal this relationship? You know, find a way to, um, to heal. heal a relationship. Yeah. And heal yourself or heal that relationship with that person? You yourself? <laughs> Both, and he's still with I you? Say. <laughs> the other person is still with you or not? No. No, no. But he's um, present in my life. He's the father of my kids, so it's very important for me to heal this relationship. Excuse me. Maybe the sound of the bell first. You know, in a broken relationship, in a broken relationship, each one suffer. You suffer, don't think that he don't. He or she is suffering too. So the first point is to try to heal yourself. And you go back, try not to think at that relationship at all. And go back to your in-breath, and you make the step in, 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 out, out. Totally with your in-breath and out-breath. And you walk, and you get rid of all these difficulty in relation, the shouting, the, the unkind thing. Just go back to your in-breath and out-breath, touching every step on the earth, and feel the solidity of the earth, and calming and releasing tension and you look up, the trees, leaves are waving to you. Mm. I'm still green for you. And that little flower is smiling for you. Go back to little flower. Be with the present moment, with your step, with the little flower, with the green leaf, with the, in, if it's in autumn, it's in the autumn leaf, everything. Heal yourself first and you feel calm after walking. The first minute, you still think of that, 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 that. And train yourself to go back to the present moment, calming, releasing tension, forget everything, letting go, letting go. The meaning word he has, the other person has said to you, letting go everything, just be totally with you. And calming and be fresh and renew yourself with the freshness of your step, with the freshness of the air, with tree of leaf, and then with the kitty or with the everything, and little chai who smile. That is the healing. And one week in Plum Village is a lot for you to heal yourself. 
and you are request i'm sure that when you do something be in the present moment don't think of paris don't think of far away and be in the present moment you look deeper to the vegetable people ask you to cut and do deeper at the food you are eating and your mind continuously think of that it's hurt it's hurt it's hurt you're okay i come back when i'm calm when i'm fresh when i am clear in my mind and 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 loving enough love me enough and love everyone including the other person enough and then one week but it's not easy after three step you already think of many other things but but thanks to the fact that you come to plum village there's many hundred people who do like you in your hamlet so even your mind are carrying away you say no no no, no i'm coming to heal myself and when you are calmer calmer so in your calmness suddenly a sentence of you spring up oh i was nasty when i said that sentence and you look deeper when you practice touching the earth you say that that sentence maybe is not me it's my mom or my yeah somebody who watered in all my childhood in my my teenage and they always say unkind thing and so in the moment of irritation i did say something unkind to her to him and then okay leave it there but you take note and then slowly you discover you have been unkind the other person have been unkind to each other we watering the unkindness or teach each other and by as we try to let go you start to see what is the positive point in other person why you appreciate him and you remember how wonderful he was how wonderful she was so on so on so on so on and you take note how wonderful thing but how come that all these wonderful thing disappear not because he changed that is because this is he changed because you changed you were very sweet he were very sweet but then you start to be irritated he irritate and escalation so we see point by point and if the broken up of the relation is not too serious you start by see the positive point in the other person and you write down yeah the other person have that quality that quality how wonderful the day we met and he that don't like that that the the number of things and the weak point so you write you you can write to him but don't send right away you write very positive thing i have seen that yeah we have met that day and why how our relation so until and then the mention the bad thing <laughs> i regret that on the relation are no longer lasting maybe partly of my 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 unskillfulness and partly of your unskillfulness what what can we do and then when you appreciate sincerely the beauty the goodness the kindness of the other person if you're surprised oh i thought that she didn't think of all that thing. and when they see they may be touched because sometimes when we live we appreciate each other the first period and after that escalation of difficulty and you become difficult and he become difficult and back and forth and then to the extent that oh, no 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 i better keep my my peace in order to leave him in order to and then he too and so there is an occasion for you to water the good seed in him in your letters only and you read back and forth tomorrow you read again mm. it's not not losing your prestige at all you say something very sincere and you only watering the great experience you have with him or with her and then after three day of reading mm, not humiliating your part so you send a letter you will see if he already have another person and don't care of you is is more difficult 
but you never know. Sometimes a seed you sow like that, it seems that there is no sprouting because he's fooled by all the relationship is more spectacular. And then, but after a few months, he said, no, she's not better than Melanie. She has seen that, 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 that. And I have seen many cases, broken relationship will be meant again. That is uh, wishful thinking. However, when you think of many wonderful things, you say that, but I did make any mistake to hurt him or to hurt like that. Next time, I will not do the same. And if you cannot, if you can avoid to do the same, avoid not to do the same, you have to promise to me, and I invite all of you, when you are angry, try not to speak. Try not to show your ugly face to other person. <coughs> he shocked you by a very unkind sentence. You go back to your in-breath and impossible to look at him with that naughty face. <laughs> so you said, I will come back. <laughs> but then you do. You are already ugly when you're shocked. <laughs> but you try to walk. In, 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 out, out, release, release, letting go, letting go, in, in, out, out, until you feel more peaceful. You find a place to sit down. Mm, what happened? He said so, you said so, and so. you look deeper and you try to say nice things. And I think that I have seen it's not unique case, many cases, they are about to be divorced. Paper had been filled up, but they came to a practice of Plum Village, begin anew. I invite both of them to sit. He tells something. I said, I tell, appreciating. And the other is appreciating. And then she was surprised. He never appreciated me like that. Because in front of people, and he tried to be conscious. And then she feel moved when he appreciated. And he also moved when she appreciated because during the last few months they are quarreling all the time and only say bad things. And so they feel touch, touch. And they have moment to, to, to think about. And then reconciliation has been done in several cases. Yeah. I don't know, it's my wishful thinking for you. Dear Thai, dear brothers and sisters, dear community, my question is how could I love myself? Because I'm very often thinking like um, I didn't do wrong or um, this or this person is doing better than I would. And so many thinkings like that are like poisoning my uh, possibility to love myself.
maybe in your family, during your childhood or teen adolescent, you have some parents who always call you and say that you have no value, you cannot be compete with your cousin, your cousin is high in that, 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 and you have no value. And if you happen to have a mother or father or uncle, it means some adult, some adult in your, in your environment, and he keep watering in your store consciousness on this, on this unpleasant condemnation. And then you are not happy at that moment. But when some difficulty arises in you, you say, oh, maybe I have no value. And that is your father or your mom or your uncle. You say, hello, uncle. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm, I'm grown up. I know what I know. And I'm a Buddha to be. And I'm Buddha now. I try my best to be peaceful, calming, looking deeply. I'm able to do or not to do. And hello to the wounded child in you. When you are young, you have been abused verbally and unkindly with so many adults around. Sometimes it's not your parents, but in class, in classroom. Little boy, little girl, and your professor, your, your, your um, educator, sometimes they are un, unmindful. Oh, there's two children, one is best. Oh, you, no value. So your teacher also contribute to your humiliation, to your low self-esteem. And so now you feel that you cannot do that. Have, you have to go back to your in-breath and out-breath. I'm a Buddha to be. I'm not fear. I can do everything. It may be some difficulty, but I will overcome. And that is the Buddha in you who said that, hello, my wounded child who have been abused by adults, by bad judgment. Say uh, your question is uh, how do you uh, learn to love yourself more? So the question before that is uh, do you understand yourself? Because love comes from understanding. So sometimes we think we understand ourselves, but we don't. We don't know how our mind works. We don't know how our feelings work, how we think, and the ideas that we have about ourselves and about other people. See, so you need to, the root of everything is understanding. That's why you cannot love yourself, because you don't understand yourself. So in meditation is finding time, finding time to look at ourselves and be with our feelings, be with our perception, be with our ideas, so we can see more clearly the way we have ideas about ourselves and about the world, about other people. And usually our ideas cause a lot of suffering. The way we view ourselves, we think we're like that, and we allow ourselves just to be like that. We don't allow ourselves to be something else. We say, oh, I'm more confident. I have to be like that. And we cause a lot of suffering, because maybe we're not that person. Or we say, oh, I'm a shy person. I don't like to be near people. and. But actually, you want to be near people. You see, so we have these ideas about ourselves, and we put ourselves in a box. And we cause a lot of feelings come up. So these things, you need time to understand. That's why it's very important to make the time to understand when a feeling comes up, where that feelings come from. So meditation is no judging. It's to understand how it works. Your suffering, you see, so you, your suffering is how do I love myself? There's a kind of suffering. But you go deeper and say, how do I understand myself? How do I understand my suffering? 
you see how suffering can be noble. It can be very good teacher. So every time you suffer, you need to go back and breathe. Don't ask the question, oh, I'm not loving myself enough. No, ask the question, I need to understand what is going on. You see, it's very different. You have to ask the right question. In meditation, it's very important to ask a question that will bring more understanding. So in, uh, that is one thing you need to do, is to reorient it. Not like, uh, I don't love myself enough. It's like, do I understand myself enough? Do I understand other people enough? Right? And do I understand the world and how it works? The other thing is uh, uh, involving thinking. We do too much thinking. Our brain is the way we've been educated. There's too much uh, thinking, uh, emphasis on thinking too much in our society. So we want to analyze, we want to always think. And that is a uh, big trouble. Most of our thinking is uh, like the weeds in the forest. It will keep pulling you in. In meditation, we learn to stop our thinking. It doesn't mean you, don't, you die. It means you follow your breathing and you make the water calm. So you have to train to do that first. Train to calm your mind. That means don't think. Thinking does this. You see, so you lower, there's the store. Huh? You're, we have two parts of our mind. There's the other part that will reveal things to you that you didn't see before. Most of the time, all of our thinking block us from seeing the real suffering. And what you, want, you need to see about yourself. We are very tricky. Our humans, we very, uh, we make it, mm, I'm okay, but actually there's a lot of stuff you're not looking at. So in meditation, we lower that, and we learn to be with that. And that will reflect things. And with the breathing, with calm, with solidity, you will begin to understand yourself more, understand your parents, understand your uncles, your past, your ancestor. You see, all this stuff come from, from your parents, from your ancestor, like Sukho shared. But you need to practice so that your water is clear, so you can see. So this is a, a, a training that we are, are doing here. Very, it's very, uh, uh, well, the children with adults, the same. Stop to calm so you can see. Basic formula. Remember that. So ask uh, the other question. Don't ask that question. Do I, how do I love myself? Is ask do, how do I understand myself? That one more uh, endless, you know, open more. And then the love will be natural. So that's very important to know. Love needs clear and true understanding. Love is not something, oh, one moment. It's not emotion. Love is not just an emotion. Love comes with clear view, right view. So please uh, uh, continue to train to uh, uh, look at it differently, huh? to uh, understand more. Huh? Thank you, brother. Chère communauté, chère Thaï, après deux ans et demi de quête spirituelle intensive et de méditation, notamment au village et Prunier, je me sens lassée, ennuyée par la pratique. Que pouvez-vous nous conseiller Merci d'abord. So, after two years and a half practicing in Plum Village, 
diligently, I feel tired. Enough with the practice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, very ennuyé, very, yeah, enough with the practice. So, what do you advise me? I don't really know how to answer this question because um, this happened a lot from monastics. Uh, many of us get bored after some years of practicing in, uh, in the Sangha. And um, yes, some of us, because of um, finding nothing new, nothing interesting, leave the Sangha. And um, then I tell my stories. Um, after, actually, after four or five years, um, I, find, uh, I found a little bit bored. <laughs> I didn't want to listen to Thai's Dharma talk um, a lot, like, a lot uh, uh, like before. I find my sister boring <laughs> uh, yes of course brothers boring as well <laughs> And I know that my brothers and sisters um, somehow saw me boring at the same time. Because um, at that time, I see that it's, there's, there's no more interest in my practice. And um, I just look myself in that situation. And um, fortunately, um, I, ha I had opportunity to join um, our teacher back to Vietnam in the in the in the first trip 2005 and that is like legendary trip to to Vietnam and also that is the first time I came back to my country after five years staying in Plum Village and it's a big change inside of me I see uh, my people suffering a lot I see young people have no uh, have no path they have um, they don't know what to do with their um, with their life and I met my friends who are now have family and suffer so much and I um, is this something um, changed in me actually I just um observe that 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 happening inside um, attend the schedule and and try to reserve energy to so that I can um, continue to follow Thai and the Sangha in the whole trip and um, after three months I get back to Deer Park Monastery uh, and stay for five months before I before Thay and Sangha sent me to Pratnya Monastery in Vietnam to stay for yam, some year to support the new Sangha there. And, and that is a really challenging time for me because I have to like, transmit from the very boring and uninteresting state to the very engaged. Um, 
to the very engaged and open uh, attitude to my uh, to my um, to to the sangha in Vietnam. And Pratnya is the first sangha, uh, the first monastic sangha in Vietnam practiced uh, in Plum Village way. And of course, we met a lot of difficulties and obstacles at that time. And one of the the practice that uh, changed my <laughs> my boringness is um, um, trying to become an older sister. I was so I was so I mean I'm the only girl in the family was spoiled and and don't know how to be a, a, an older sister. Um, just receiving love from my family and um, and and don't know how to really take care of others. And now I get back to Pratnya Monastery with 20 something and take care of the younger ones. And <laughs> at that time I didn't uh, receive the lamb transmission yet, but then have Nancy, have take care of, I have to take care of um, aspirants and learn how to be with them. The, uh, they are like 14, 15 to 18 years old learn how to be with them, how to um, guide them in the Aspen um, time and become a novice. And I see that it's, um, it's really precious time for me to practice how to love and how to show my love to my younger sister. And I see it's, 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 um, it's really changed my, um, my body in it. So, um, the thing is, I accept myself when I get bored. I don't judge myself too much. And I believe that I, uh, I, have, I, I will find the way out of that situation. Somehow, I, I have that faith in me. Somehow, I know that with this practice, I will find the way out of that situation. And um, I just keep being in the Sangha. <coughs> And if you are a monastic or if you are a lay uh, practitioner, you get bored in the practice. Um, just enjoy that <laughs> boring situation <laughs> and observe your mind and um, stick with the Sangha. And um, that's that uh, one of my um, vow that to stick to the Sangha, then I will find a way out. And uh, the other thing is um, we try many ways to... Um, to surprise, I try many ways to surprise myself. Like my brother shared that, um, stay curious, stay interested to our manas uh, to our um, practice, and ask questions. I used to ask so many questions before. Then one time that I, when I uh, sit next to Thay, being his attend being his attendant, and ask so many questions, and Thay asked me, Tokan. Don't ask any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> the tree outside is very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, being, being, um, being accepted, because um, we are human beings, some, sometimes we are very energetic, but sometimes we are very tired and sad. And, and for me, I accept myself as I am, and um, I, don't, I don't just conclude myself in that situation. Yes, you are that person. You are that kind of person. You are not a good practitioner. No, I don't do that to myself. From the time that I learned how to love myself, how to show my love to my younger sister, that I see the, interest, the uh, practice is more interesting. And I try to... Um, find way to renew my practice in many ways. Like, for example, um, one of the things that I play with is I really play with my uh, studying corner. Each sister have a studying table and we decorate like in our own uh, style. And I promise myself that whenever I come back to my studying corner, I, I just be myself, be... Um, um, at peace, at ease with the child in, inside of me and drop everything out there. Even the, the task, 
or opportunity, the, the responsibility of um, the sisters and other things that I... Then it's just surprised me all the time that whenever I, I have a chance to get back to my certain corner, so um, you will, you can find your own way to, to renew your practice, keep renewing um, our practice. And also that is a process of training ourselves to, to um, find ways to renew our practice. So uh, it is not easy, it's a challenge for, for every practitioner. And I wish you um, find um, more joy and happiness and more interesting in your practice. Thank you. Mm, I just want to add uh, just a short comment. This is what we call uh, the honeymoon effect. <laughs> and it's happened for uh, every, any situation, whether a couple. That couple here would be means us with the sangha or in a couple. So this is, this is maybe a koan yeah, for each of us, how to make the honeymoon last forever. Thank you. In fact, when you have a perception about Plum Village, about the practice, Samatha, Vipassana, the bell ring, you stop, the telephone ring, you stop, so you follow up regularly, and it's become like, uh, like Thay Pháp Leo said, that is the honeymoon, on honeymoon have time have passed. In fact, we can renew. When the bell rings, we stop. And you can, oh, it means the bell ring. you should not speak. Mm. But in fact, you stop and you see around. How wonderful that you come here this week, 1,100 person without Thai, and we still come because we really want to practice to renew ourselves. And stopping like that, I feel so touched by your sincerity of your practice. And it's not only you who feel boring, but many have feel renewed and they are happy because they are practiced deeper. And so you su practice superficially, bell ring, stop. Telephone ring, stop. And then, and do it in a very superficial way. But when the bell ring, stop. Make a new eyes, a new look. How wonderful that. This year, children are so proud, and they're happy, and they're young people, and there's so many wonderful question, and you look deeper, and you appreciate the moment of stopping. And when you walk, mm, oh, this flower is blooming. In the past, I just walk, try not to be in rush, so you look awkward. It's not like other person you try to look. But now you really enjoy putting your step on the ground, a little miles of this Mizutis is smiling to you. Mm, mm. The daisy there, oh, oh, there is violet flower in the other side. It's so you enjoy the present moment. And you enjoy the face of each practitioner. This year there is so many people who speak Spanish. Oh, this Vietnamese come from so far. Oh, they are so. I just cannot stop to be amazed of the practice. And I have practiced this for how many years? 50, 56 years with Thai. And every day I keep look deeper and discover new things to enjoy, to enjoy. And I feel that I'm so fortunate that my life is full of mindful people. There are those who are very mindful, they are less mindful, those who practice much better than me. You think that when I share touching the earth, and there are many of you who have been big difficulty with their parents, but they can stop, um, heal themselves, 
renew their relation, and they can be very good friend of that father who abused her, and there's so many wonderful practice. And I discover every day a lot of bodhisattva. He is a bodhisattva. Oh, she's also a bodhisattva. Oh, it's so wonderful that I had the chance to be with many of you. And it's new to me. It's nourish me. It's make me stronger and stronger. And then I said, that, no, I cannot miss Plum Village. Even I have many interesting in Thailand, but I said, that, no, I have to come here. It's my family here. And my family is not the same. Every year we have new friends, new good people. And just keep looking deeper, and you will see you renew. You renew your practice. But if you do in a very, very passive way, the bell ring stop walking, not too fast, people will look at you and correct you. <laughs> so, and so it will be boring. It's better not to come. And you not to come for five years, and then you come back. It's so different, oh, so wonderful people. And you will see, sometimes you need to stop for one or two years to renew yourself in the, on the beach, and you will see that on the beach there is so many food, but not very, <laughs> not very up. <laughs> so you will see. Dear Thai, dear Sangha, and dear monks and nuns, my question is actually, I'm curious about your experience while you are stepping out of this beautiful place and um, let's say going to Paris. And I don't know if you have uh, the same clothes when you go out to the city. That's one thing I'm curious about. But also, <laughs> um, I'd really like to know if you would like to share uh, what is it that you feel when you are when you're seeing uh, all those people who run and uh, they have they f their faces uh, stuck in their smartphones and in their smartphones and uh, if you feel that you have some kind of purpose or a mission in your presence uh, while you're there He asked when we go out to the monastery, uh, how what is our experience? Um, do we wear our same clothes? And what is our interaction with uh, the world outside? And what do we, uh, how do we feel about people using now a lot of uh, get smartphone, right? Yeah, and rushing them opposite from here, basically. Uh, opposite from here, yeah. Rushing. Mm. Yeah, that's... Uh, Maybe you come on tour with us? <laughs> when I was uh, a young man, uh, still have hair, and uh, a lay person, I was very curious too. I see, I went to one retreat, and I, I remember uh, feeling a lot of uh, happiness and peace. And I look in the stage, Thai bring 30 monks and nuns to America, and I remember looking at them, they're so young. Why do they do that, you know? And they look so happy. And then, uh, part of me, I grew up in the West, in uh, Los Angeles, and I'm very uh, critical, or very suspicious of uh, people who are happy all the time. <laughs> I was like, I don't think they're smiling all the time, you know? I have to go to another retreat, and I go, uh, that was a Vietnamese retreat, and then I went to Santa Barbara for English retreat. I call my boss, I say, 
uh, I need a few weeks. I go take a break. And then Sister Chang Kong, she said, uh, I will pay you a ticket. You follow us three months. And then I say, oh, that would be nice. Free ticket. She go uh, offer to, uh, because, and in, in me, I see opportunity to see if these monks and nuns are for real. Because <laughs> I'm very, uh, you know, I go, I wonder what's, uh, what they do outside the retreat. Uh, are they like that, you know? I bet you they have a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I follow them. I, uh, I live with them, and uh, Brother Fapnim, he let me to stay with his room. And slowly I see uh, that they do have some difficulty, but there's a lot of uh, community, a lot of brotherhood, sisterhood. And I remember seeing the uh, first time I drive uh, to, from Northern California down to Southern California, how much stuff they have, you know? I, I, have a, I had a car, and the brother and sister uh, asked me if I can help bring some stuff down. And I said, yeah, sure. And they bring out luggages and luggages, and I go, yeah, how much stuff do you have? <laughs> they feel my front seat too, you know? And uh, so my perception, very different. I was like, oh, okay. And so I drive down, and we stop at a gas station. And I remember, see, uh, you know, we're getting gas, and I see a lot of brother and sister, very young, and they're playing, and Thai, surprised me. He went in there, the liquor store, and he came out with an ice cream. <laughs> and his two attendant, ice cream, you know? And I look and I go, no, you did not get an ice cream. <laughs> you know the kind that you get from the machine? <laughs> you know? It's really cheap ice cream, but it's uh, very sweet. And I couldn't believe Ty had an ice cream. His is small, but the two attendant, I never forget that, and and I see Tai walk into the bus, and you know what happened? All the brothers doing Qi Kong, and every, everyone went to the store. <laughs> and I go, wow! And I go in the store too. I come out with ice cream. So a lot of I and I I see I, see, uh, I remember that never. Uh, I don't think Tai cared for ice cream, but he knew. His young, uh, his student, maybe some of them want to eat ice cream, but Thai is around, so everybody good monk, you know. <laughs> but Thai go get the ice. He's the first one to get the ice cream, and I go, wow. And he open. Uh, he's so compassionate, and I see his love for his children, and everyone get ice cream, long like that, <laughs> and it's very beautiful. So this is uh, something, mm, we have an idea about the monk and nun, but we, uh, mm, here in the monastery, mm, then we go and follow them, you have another idea, and they go on. Uh, our view of the monk and nun become deeper and deeper. Sister Chang Kong shared about our purpose and our, our, what we do, the, our life, the meaning of it become deeper and deeper. If we rely and we stay with the Sangha, and our understanding go deeper. But usually, if we get stuck with the idea about the monk or nun or so, then we, we become very stuck. And we cannot, you know, it's the river don't no more flow. This is usually happen in the practice. But to share with you going outside normal. First, the brother and sister who go the first time outside the monastery, usually we, we sit with him, we share with him. There's a lot of uh, imp uh, images, a lot of uh, stimulation. So there's a need more uh, practice, need more training. You need to prepare yourself because it's not the same as in Plum Village. More images of women and more sexual messages, more uh, uh, stress energy. So we need to really master our breath or else we, we will be triggered and uh, we call it like a, a toxic uh, thing come in because outside they don't see like that. It's freedom of speech, freedom of advertising. But it's like our food, you know, the food, we need to know what's in our food, right? Right? When we eat, we need to know it's healthy, it's good, but we don't have that same view about the outside, what is on the uh, telephone, uh, smartphone. 
We don't see the, the things we see with our eyes and hear. We have no limitation. So it's very, uh, we, we share with the brothers to be very careful to uh, protect ourselves so uh, uh, things don't come in and it takes a long time to filter. And this is the reality of our, our, our world. We, we don't have a, a, a guideline for the different food we eat with our eyes and our ears. But luckily, we always go as a Sangha. We go with 30 brothers, 15 uh, brothers and sisters, and we, we, we take over the energy. You know, we, we, you see us on the airplane. There's like 30 monks and nuns. <laughs> and we pass food to each other, and the, 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 all the other uh, people, they, oh, they, they uh, get uh, affected by the joy. And we give them a uh, banana wrap something, and banana wrap something, and they, they eat with us. Sometimes we sit in the middle of the airport with Thai and we drink tea, and people walk by and they're. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very nice to travel uh, uh, together as a, a Sangha. Everywhere we go, we go like that, so we protect each other. You see? So we see that and we nourish our compassion. We see that the world needs uh, uh, direction, they need uh, practice to guide. There's not a lot of guidance. And not a lot of restraint, and not, not a lot of respect. So, so that's why we have a wake-up school to, in education to teach the young people again about values, about respect, about um, ethics, about nature, about respecting trees. So this is uh, our experience in uh, going outside. It's important for us in our training to go every year, springtime, and autumn, we go travel. Summertime, everyone come back. Wintertime, everyone come back. Winter and summer. All the monks and nuns, we come back. Summer, we do like here. And wintertime, three months, we don't go out. And we reflect. It's kind of like filtering. You go back and you, uh, you know, process, digest. But autumn and spring, we travel uh, to interact is a Thai's tradition to engage, mm -hmm. but we also need protection with our mindfulness, with our concentration, with our Sangha. So when we travel like that, it is uh, more, uh, more safe. It's like Thai say, it's like you need to wear a seatbelt. When you interact with the world, we also need some, that's mindfulness, our breathing, we're mindful of what's coming in. So that's our training as monastic, and our robes protect us, and uh, that's why we do not wear lay clothes. We go out, and we, they see us, they know we are on the path. See, we wear lay clothes, and they treat us, they might come and pick us, you look handsome. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? and so when we wear our clothes, we know we need to walk in a certain way. We don't rush. Right? And we know we know how to sit, and we know when we eat, we eat like, you know, so our robe reminds us of our practice. Same thing our head. When we shave our head, it reminds us our purpose to help relieve suffering and to help bring more understanding. So this is, uh, we keep this dress as a protection as well. So, uh, yeah, thank you. So I invite you uh, to, to uh, follow on. Uh, one of the U.S. tour this fall, if you want. <laughs> Th three months.
dear Thai, dear brothers and sisters, dear Sangha. Mm. Mm. My question is a provoking one, but also a very important one for me. And I would like to ask it the same way a child asked a question before. Um, what is the meaning of sexuality? Sexuality. Sexuality, yes. I think that sexuality is for the evolution of the species on Earth. And there is nothing wrong in that. But if we monastic, we decide to stop the door of sexuality because we think that the world has enough children already. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to help to, to these young people to grow you know, more beautifully according to some guideline of, of, uh, of beauty and greatness. And that is why we lock the door for sexuality. It doesn't mean that you said, when I see somebody marry, you know, ah, it's not good. I think that is good because we need future Buddha. The Buddha of 2,600 years ago is, we need young Buddha. And among the young people who come here, I expect a lot of them will become future Buddha. And so, sexually, but so why in the training we have, sexuality go without love and deep understanding and deep commitment? It doesn't make sense. It makes sense like many species on Earth who evolved and need to have sexuality and have children and have a baby deer, baby monkey, baby. But it's not really the commitment for creating some, some species on Earth who are more beautiful, a Buddha species and, and a Bodhisattva species. And so those who receive the 14 mindfulness training need to have a long-term commitment and, 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 and sexuality cannot go together without love. Love and sexuality must go together when you have a deep understanding, deep communion, deep understanding. And that is why I go a little bit out of... There is a couple who came to Plum Village. They lived together for 15 years, and the, the partner man said that, I'm sorry, I cannot marry you because I have two partners. One, you are in Paris, but I have another partner in Marseille, and I have another partner in, in Milus. And when I am in Milus, I have sex with her, I go to Paris with you. To, and so, so I told her, it's my first lesson on being with the West 20 or 40 years ago. I said, and she asked my advice. I said, in that case, don't marry, don't, don't have sex with him. But three months later, she wrote to me a letter saying that we are going to marry. Because at the beginning, no way of speaking about wedding and marriage. And, and I said, and I called you, you follow my advice? No, sister, <laughs> I have my way. And that way is very beautiful. She said that when he came to Paris and he wanted to have sex with her, she said that, sorry, why you come here? You want a good food? There's many restaurants around. Very cheap, 10, 10 euro. You can, a good, you can have a good dish outside where you need here. And then she said, if you want to have sex with me, practice meditation. <laughs> and they sit together, and he has to appreciate her, any of her quality. It's not the way of cooking, the way of arranging the house, the way of welcoming him, and that smile, and that, that. And he tried to be very mindful of her. It's not just sex, but very mindful of any beauty of her, of him. And then in, in, to answer to that, she also have to tell him 
how wonderful he is, and maybe the first time she appreciate him in before having sex. How wonderful you are! And they're so happy, and then they have sex. And after that, after two months, he said, "You are the best." No, I would not have other sex with other women. So he decided to marry her, and he decided to inform the parents. And the first time, after 15 years being together, he invited her to come to Bhutan to see his parents and so on. So I think that sex must go to leave, to, to love and deep communion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you end with that. Maybe one the bell, and we will end with a, a written question. Sangha, there's a, a question. Uh, how can you help a young person who doesn't want to leave? Uh, I think it's uh, an important question for our time. I think uh, first we 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 should um, see if it is a case of uh, uh, heavy depression or not. Uh, if, if, it, if it is a uh, uh, heavy depression, then uh, that need uh, uh, a therapy. Uh, um, uh, 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 adapt, adapted therapy. Hmm? Uh, otherwise, if uh, this young person, young friend, doesn't have a feel the meaning of life, uh, he, he doesn't have the energy um, to continue to live, then I think the, in both cases, uh, we, we can um, help um, with the same um, uh, directions. I can see when, I um, can see first a lot of loneliness, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, a person who, who doesn't want to live, who doesn't find a meaning of life, uh, I think there's uh, two. Um, he he the, he. First, this person is not connected in a vertical dimension. He doesn't feel um, connected to the the stream of ancestors uh, and himself, and then the the descendants, uh, and. Uh, the, f the, the feeling of loneliness can come when we, we are not connected in this uh, vertical dimension. Mm -hmm. We feel like we are alone, we are isolated, and uh, mm, we are not supported. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the practice is how uh, to help this uh, friend to be connected to his ancestors, to his traditions, to his culture, hmm? how he can root it in this uh, vertical uh, root, I would say. Hmm? And secondly, the feeling of loneliness also can come from the horizontal axis. That means that we cannot connect to others. Mm. and we don't feel the love from others. If we are not connected in the vertical dimension, we cannot love ourselves. And if we are not connected in the horizontal uh, dimension, we cannot feel the love from others also. Mm. And both the two axes will, uh, 
will support each other. So the, the horizontal axis is the environment also. So uh, how can we help to change the environment of a person like that? So the, here we have a, a lot of young people who come and sometimes they are in the state of their life or they just finished study, uh, they have worked for a few years very intensively and they are so stressed that they want to have a break and they want to have time to reflect on the, um, the purpose of their life. Hmm? So uh, not only we have the five years program for those who want to be monastic, but also we have um, a long-term resident uh, program also. Uh, and then, then when uh, young people come like that, live a mindful life and uh, be supported by uh, young people, then we can be inspired by others. Uh, so um, even if you don't, you, you don't feel happy by yourself, but if you are bathed in in a, in an environment of a joyful energy, uh, of happy energy, then you will be lifted. Your energy will be lifted. So that's uh, that's what we call the collective energy. Mm? You can experience very well that, uh, and especially in New Hamlet or in Lower Hamlet, uh, when you are around the Vietnamese sisters. Uh, they laugh all the time. Uh, they, they, they chat and then they laugh, even if you don't understand, but laughing, smiling is very contagious. Uh, so that means that we need to, be, to put ourselves in the envir environment and then the energy will nourish uh, ourselves. Uh, it's the same, like there's uh, people who... Uh, who, who go to Vietnam, who are depressed in France, and who go to Vietnam, they are the sun, there are a lot of noise, there are a lot of, and they are bathed in a, a chaos. Yeah. But you see, you can see life, people struggling, struggling for life, uh, for, for, for their, their food every day. So it's, it's very difficult to be depressed in Vietnam. You see, in, in, in third country, like that. So, um, and then in the environment, a Sangha environment, then you will be able to, to have a practice of, um, of uh, touching the earth, uh, to be in connection with uh, our ancestors, uh, the beauty of our ancestors, uh, and uh, so that we start to reconnect in this horizontal uh, axis. And then the, 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 the Sangha support, and with, when we see that when we are in contact, when we interact with young people who have very nice aspiration, then we, we start to, uh, to see maybe in ourselves also their um, aspiration may be coming from our, uh, our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents, that didn't have the time to pop up and to flourish. Mm? So in an environment, environment of uh, like Plum Village, uh, we allowed those uh, aspirations, those very beautiful aspirations, to pop up and to flourish. And the first aspiration is to deal, to, to transform uh, our suffering. Uh, and so that so a, a, a person who, who wants to, uh, to suppress himself and to, doesn't want to live, and he, he suffers a lot from isolation, from loneliness, and not to see the meaning of life. So, that's, uh, that's all what I, I could share. Maybe my brothers and sisters could add a little bit. Thank you.